Welcome back to our cartoon on displays. Last time, we looked at how our display hardware worked by breaking down the components of an LCD. With the mechanics of our display down, let's talk about how applications can send image data to our displays. We do this with a frame buffer, which is a memory array that stores color values for each pixel on the screen. Frame buffers can be in RAM or graphics card memory. You may have heard the term VRAM, which refers to RAM specialized for storing image data. For example, here we have a frame buffer that stores 8-bit values for each of the three RGB channels. This allows us to represent over 16 million colors, and is why we commonly specify color components on a 0 to 255 scale, because we only have 256 possible values with 8 bits. Our applications will write color values to the frame buffer. The video card then pushes frame buffer color data to the hardware display memory. This is done at a configurable frequency known as a refresh rate. Then, the display finally draws the image from its memory. A standard refresh rate for modern displays is 60 Hz, which means the display updates nearly 60 times a second. This makes it appear as if consecutive frames blend together, making smooth animations in movies. There are issues with a single frame buffer though. If a display is being updated at the same time the new image data is being written in, it can cause something called screen tearing. Here's one example, and another, and one more. One way to alleviate screen tearing is to use double buffering, which is to maintain a second buffer. Applications write the next frame to the back buffer while the front buffer is on display. Then. To transition to the next frame, the back buffer content is copied to the front buffer. Notice how all the information is being written into the back buffer. The front buffer hasn't been updated yet, so on our refresh check, our display doesn't update either. And once we reach another refresh tick, because our front buffer has been updated, now the display changes. Although double buffering reduces screen tearing significantly, there are still some issues. So a further enhancement is to use something called VSync. With VSync, the copying does not happen at a fixed refresh rate. Instead, image data is immediately sent to the display once the front buffer has been fully written. Like so. Now that we understand LCD technology in detail, we can explore some other display types that seek to improve its limitations. Have you ever watched a movie with the light off? You may have observed that when the image fades to black, there's still some light coming from the screen. LCDs are unable to show true black color because of their uniform backlight. Since a single light source lights up the entire display, high contrasts between dark blacks and bright colors are tough to pull off. We can fix this problem with a different type of display, called an OLED. OLED displays have much in common with LCDs. Both designs conduct electricity to control the amount of light emitted through each subpixel. Then this light passes through an RGB color filter. Where they differ, however, is that while all the pixels of an LCD share a backlight, in an OLED, we can control the light value of each individual subpixel by giving each subpixel its own light source. This allows for greater contrast in a more visually impressive display. OLEDs improve on the familiar technology of LEDs, or light-emitting diodes. An LED operates via a principle known as electroluminescence. It produces light by passing electric current through a semiconducting material. Unfortunately, Traditional LEDs cannot be adequately miniaturized to the size of a subpixel. This is where OLEDs come in, or organic light emitting diodes. Similar to traditional LEDs, OLEDs emit light when excited by an electric field. Instead of individual bulbs, OLEDs use a layer of organic compound called an emissive layer, sandwiched between an anode and a cathode. This organic compound can emit different amounts of light for each subpixel in the display. Further developments of OLEDs may allow for individual subpixels to be color emitting. Goodbye, color filter! And while OLED and LCD displays, as we have discussed, are behind most consumer displays, used in phones, tablets, monitors, and TVs, there are still many other display technologies to explore. Among them are e-ink, vacuum fluorescent displays, electroluminescent displays, plasma displays, and CRTs. We hope you have enjoyed our cartoon displays. Thanks for watching.